Hey, Caroline. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks. Uh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate you taking the time to have a chat. And, it's uh, absolutely my pleasure. How are you um, holding up at the moment in these crazy times that we live in? <laughs> I'm doing really well. I mean, I'm, like everyone else, I'm making the best of the circumstance that we're in. Obviously, you can't tour, but I'm using the time to... Uh, really dig deep into myself creatively and recording new music and putting out new music. I've been putting out a song every month, which has been a really fun project that's been keeping me busy. So, um, especially compared to other people who have completely lost their jobs or going through really tough times, I, I consider myself blessed because I have the outlet of music. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about the release strategy of releasing a song at the end of every month because uh, you've decided to do that as opposed to waiting for an EP or an album. So what was the thinking behind that at this moment in time? Were you just thinking that everybody needs music right now? I've been wanting to gear myself and my career more towards this format for a while, just based on the way that I've started consuming music. And no one loves music more than me. You know, I'm an avid music fan. Uh, but I can't remember the last time that I listened to an album all the way through. And I don't really say that, that you know, some people might shame me for that. Uh, you know, how can you call yourself a musician and a music fan, but our world is changing so fast and the media and content input um, of our daily lives is just overwhelming. So I think being able to adapt and evolve along with the times, and along with the technology is really important. And I also think that it's very freeing because it's not like you can't release an album you can, and there's still a big market for that. And especially if you have a dedicated fan base who loves your music, that's a, still a wonderful, very viable format. But now we're free to release a track on SoundCloud or a single every month or a single every day or an EP or an hour long documentary, you know, or a docu-series, or there's just so many creative forums now um, that have to do with releasing your music. And that's really exciting to me because I, I don't even always write. I mean, I write in a lot of different styles and I don't even always write in a traditional pop song format, you know, where it's verse, B section, chorus, verse, B section, chorus, bridge, chorus, out. Like, I think that's outdated too. Um, so it's kind of exciting. There's, there are less and less rules and stipulations. Yeah. And you've kicked it off with what have you which you released at the end of last month all about kind of taking on life's ups and downs and i know that's very personal to you and, and your personal life and your career and what you've experienced the last few years so tell us how that idea came about and the songwriting process behind that one that one is a little bit different for me uh because i wrote it in met over many years in many pieces it actually started as a guitar riff the do 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 uh, in an open tuning that I wrote a really long time ago. And originally it had a different title and a different chorus. And so that one was really pieced together over years. Um, I think the chorus came first, uh, maybe two or three years ago. And then last year I wrote verses and the, what a view. Um, so that was a journey for sure. But that song is also about a journey, you know? <laughs> so. Um, it's kind of poetic in that way. That song is about uh, navigating the ups and downs of life with people that you love, you know, and being in it for the long haul with people that you love and the richness that that can bring to a relationship. Like if you really stick it uh, out with folks. And I don't even really like that, that phrase because it implies a lot of like suffering and sacrifice. I think that, you know, growth doesn't always have to involve suffer suffering. Sometimes it does, but um, I like the word challenge better, you know, and, um, and navigating challenges with grace and elegance and perspective is something that I think you can really only do over time. Like it matures you and it makes you grow up. And, and that's something that I've um, hopefully been learning more and more. And you put out a gorgeous music video for it as well, which you filmed in Colorado with Project Black Box. Um, now I'll speak to some artists and uh, some people don't like doing the visual side of stuff and they, they just want to focus on the music but do you enjoy that whole creative process of sort of bringing a song to life? 
I really do, Dan. Yeah. I, over the years from my first music video rise, I've just, I became obsessive with video content. And I, I feel like now it is such an important aspect of content because I don't, I, I want my brand to be focused on my music and on my creativity and on the message that I'm trying to portray. So if you want that to be your brand, it can be a very narrow choice because now there are lots of, there's lots of pressure in the music industry to have your lifestyle be part of your brand, have your personal life be part of your brand, have what you wear and where you go out to and who you hang out to, with be part of your brand. And to me, that dilutes the music and the creativity and, and takes the focus off of my art. So because I've chosen my music to be my brand, adding visual aspects and adding the, the visual side of the art um, is a way to diversify that brand and keep it exciting and fresh for people. Um, and we live in such a visual culture now. Um, so I love bringing songs to life visually and I love coming up with ideas with Tyler, Project Black Box, um, who we collaborate on everything together. And I, it, it just, um, it just adds an emotional, like another emotional side to, to the music. And, um, I love editing. Like I love the whole thing. It's so <laughs> much fun. Yeah. Uh, coming back to the recording, you've you worked with Rick Wake, who you've worked with on loads of your recordings in the past. So from a creative standpoint, how inspiring is it to have a Grammy Award winner in the studio with you? And how much does he inspire you creatively? Yeah, well, one of the things, I mean, I would say the maybe the biggest thing that I love about Rick is how humble he is. He never um, he, he's accomplished so much. I mean, he's sold like a hundred million records, something ridiculous. He never speaks about any of that. He's always approaching a room, um, with the intention of creating the best vibe for inspiration. It's most conducive to inspiration for the people in the room. It's never about him. And, um, I've, I've learned a lot from that. That's a very unique, that's very unique for a producer, but that's what makes him such a great producer. Um, and we just work really well together. And he, he has a great perspective. He has tons of experience. Um, he, he never loses sight of the end goal of a record. Um, he, he knows really quickly what parts are gonna work and what parts aren't gonna work. And I'm much more, um, I would say like detail oriented, obsessive, compulsive, like, um, I have a million ideas that I can throw at the wall. So we, we work really well together um, in that way. And, and we're, we're great partners in business as well. Yeah. So moving forward, you've announced very recently that Intimacy is going to be coming out on Friday. And I also saw your post on Instagram about doing a choreographed dance video. Is that for the new song as well? Yes. So uh, Intimacy is coming out on Friday, the song and the music video. And this is the first time when I finished Intimacy, which is a song that's pretty different for me. It's the, a lot of people would call the production like alternative pop um, or alternative electronic pop. And um, that's just how it came out. Um, I wrote the song on a keyboard with this kind of like um, pizzicato violin sample. So it's a little bit Julia Michaels-ish in that way. And um, when we finished the song, it took such a long time to get this song right, the production. We tried so many different types of like we tried an organic rhythm section, like a rock rhythm section. Um, we tried like a halftime almost reggae thing. And then we finally landed on what you'll hear on Friday, which I'm really proud of. And it's perfect for the song in my opinion. Um, but when we finished it, I remember saying to Rick, like this is, I, I'm gonna do a full on dance video to this song. Um, I've, I love dancing. I dance all the time by myself. Um, and I used to dance, you know, I used to take, uh, classes when I was in like middle school and high school, I was on dance team and stuff, but I haven't danced really since then. And I, but I always had it in my mind. Like I saw the intimacy music video in my mind. And so, uh, we, we got this girl, Candace Brown, who's worked with Janet Jackson and Beyonce to, to choreograph it. And I like trained for a full week and then we went and shot it and it was so much fun. And it's really, you know, it's a joy to challenge yourself creatively in another a completely different craft you know it actually made me kind of brought what's it like breathed new life into even my guitar playing and my singing and all my other crafts because dancing is like everything every other artistic endeavor is like a whole world in itself you know you could spend your whole life 
um, just learning one genre of dance. Um, and so to just kind of dip your toe into a craft that you don't put quite as much pressure on yourself about, like I do with singing or guitar playing or songwriting or all those things that I'm a professional at, you know, um, it, it opens up your mind and your like playful kind of kid spirit um, about all the other creative crafts in your life. So it was so much fun. And it's something I want to do more of and I want to do it on stage too. I just want to like break into choreo, play the electric guitar, the band <laughs> Thing. it's going to be so fun it's interesting what you say about kind of dipping your dipping your toes into different creative crafts and you did that with all of the boys as well by kind of experimenting with different remixes and the different sounds mm -hmm. so um tell us a little bit about that and how much fun that was to kind of totally transform the song in four different ways yeah great segue by the way dan <laughs> um yeah all of the boys I, I want to do more of this again. I love dance music. I love all different kinds of music. I mean, I'm just a music fan. I feel it's, it's really tough in this day and age because we grow up on so many different kinds of music now. You know, music used to be regional. It used to be if you grew up in a certain place, you listen to country. If you grew up in a certain place, you listen to blues. If you grew up in a certain place, you listen to classical or whatever, jazz. Um, and now everyone grows up listening to everything. So then to become an adult or a young adult and be asked to put your music in a box is so um just counterintuitive you know but I, but i do feel that like my music is closest to the country pop genre because i love playing organic instruments and because um my craft as an instrumentalist and a producer and a songwriter is so important to me um and that authenticity and that uh musicianship are really like the cornerstones of what i think of my brand um as my brand so but that being said i love all these different kinds of music so it's really fun for me to to reimagine a song sometimes i have a hard time deciding the direction a song should go because i feel like i could do a rock version of it i could do a country version of it i could do a full-on edm version of it i can do an acoustic version of it sometimes it's hard for me like that's where rick is so helpful you know he'll be like no we should go this way but it was fun with all of the boys we did a dance remix an acoustic coffee house remix um we did a more country remix so uh, i'm gonna continue to do that i think throughout my career and speaking of all the boys i wanted to chat with you a little bit about working with zach brown because zach for me is just a, a musical god he's one of the reasons i even got into country music so Oh, cool. um, from a from a creative standpoint, just how versatile is Zach as a writer? Because if you listen to all of the boys, you wouldn't instantly think that's Zach Brown. No, you wouldn't. But Zach had some really important contributions to that song. I actually wrote that song. It was pretty much finished, but it was the lyric was from a third person perspective. So it was she makes friends with all of the boys, um, and he was the one who suggested that I change it to a first person perspective and say, I make friends with all the boys. He thought it would be much more sassy and kind of sexy and empowering that way. And he also wrote uh, the musical bridge and made some melodic changes. And um, he's just, I I'm glad to hear that you admire and respect him as much as I do. He's creatively fearless. He's extremely devoted to his own creative integrity. And he's just an extremely caring, supportive, loving friend to so many people like he inspires so many people that he doesn't know but to the people that he does know he's just the kindest um most supportive friend and and i owe basically my entire career to him like he gave me really my first big tour my first big audiences my my first big shot and everything has come from that so um i'm eternally grateful for him but um yeah he's he's brilliant he's brilliant yeah. You mentioned being on tour with Zach and you've, you've also been fortunate enough to be on tour with Jimmy Buffett and Kenny Chesney and all these huge names. Um, how much have you picked up both, both personally and professionally from these guys? Have you learned a lot about eventually when you headline your own shows, how you're going to treat support artists? Oh, yeah. Well, I feel like that's pretty intuitive in country music and with these guys who have huge careers is... I've been so spoiled on every tour I've been on. I mean, everyone has been so kind to me. Um, and I've been just extremely giddy and respectful because I dreamed about touring on this level before I ever got to do it. I mean, I dreamed of it for years. Um, and I, 
I love the legacy, the way that things shake out. Like I love mentorship and legacy. That's really important to me. So to have superstars take me under their wing. Yeah. I'm soaking up everything I possibly can, not just about how they treat me, but how they treat their crew and their band and the folks at the venue and their fans, you know, how they super serve their fans. That's why these folks have careers that are decades and decades long. Like Jimmy is 74 years old, I think. Um, you know, and Kenny's been touring for decades. Zach's going on two decades. Like there's a reason that they're still selling out arenas and stadiums. Um, and it's, you know, it's beyond the flash in the pan commercial success or radio hit hits. Like it's a, it's a deep emotional connection that their fans have with their message and their artistry. And that's what I want to build one day. You must be missing playing these shows so much because you, you're kind of right at the pinnacle of what you could do professionally. And then suddenly everything's gone in a flash. It's like, you must be so distraught about that. Yeah, it's really bizarre, Dan, because I, I feel like I would be much more upset if I just wasn't touring and everyone else was. Like, I would be so angry. But it's such a weird year where you just have had to surrender to the circumstances. Like, there's no other option. No one is touring. Like, no one is doing anything. So um, I've tried to really pour all my energy into my creativity. Um, but yeah, I, I do miss the interaction. I really miss the connection. And I love building the craft of performing. Like, that's a craft also that you develop over time from playing hundreds and thousands of shows. Um, so I, we'll all be very eager to get back to that for sure. And just before I let you go, Caroline, I wanted to speak to you about UK plans because obviously you came over to do C2C last year and had such a great reaction at the O2. So once all this COVID nightmare is over, is it something that you'd like to do to keep coming back to the UK and try and build a, a solid fan base over here? Absolutely. Yeah, no question. I, I don't even know what to add. Yes, <laughs> I would. I mean, people just love um, authenticity over there. They love the stories, they love country music, and they appreciate artistry. And um, that's a real, real gift. So yeah, I, I definitely want to build a fan base over there. That's what we like to hear. Well, Caroline, thank you for doing this today. I appreciate you. Yeah, time to have a chat really appreciate and, uh, you. And best of luck with all the new music. We look forward to seeing the new video. Thank video. you. Yeah, let me know what you think of it. Yeah, I will do. Thank you, Caroline.